Welcome to the tutorial for Mute City. In this tutorial I will demonstrate and analyze 4 strategies for distract that will help you improve your best time. The strategies that I will demonstrate are meant to be of use to players of all skill levels. I will start with the first basic strategy that will allow any player to beat the Steph Ghost. The more difficult strategies will allow even the best players to improve their times. Each strategy is given a difficulty rating to let you know what you're getting yourself into. This strategy is also given a goal time to work towards to before moving on to the next one. This tutorial assumes an understanding of the game's driving mechanics and moves as covered in the driving mechanics and moves tutorial on my channel, so be sure to check that one out first. Okay, let's get started and have fun! The first strategy of Mute City mainly focuses on efficient driving. Only very gently steer and keep as many straight lines as possible to maintain your speed. Steer gently through the first turn, but do take it sharp and line yourself up with the dash blade in a straight line as soon as you can. Take the full length of dash blades of Mute City. They are pretty big and they will give you more boost if you cover the full length of them because you are on the dash blade for a few more frames. On the rail before the tunnel, if you hit it very gently you can lean up against it without slowing down or taking away energy. After the tunnel, set a straight line through the refill zone up to the long corner up ahead. In the long corner, stay on the left side close to the rail to take the inside of it. And when you come up with the dark green texture again, line yourself up with the dash plate. This is the same on all three laps. At this point, keep a straight line towards the dash plate. Go along the full length of the dash plate, but stay on the left side. Go up to the rail again, stay on the inside. The rest of this corner, you want to stay on the inside as much as possible. And after the corner, line yourself up with the dash plate in the middle of the looping. Do this in a straight line. When you follow the straight line, you will eventually come to the right side of the looping. The right side of the looping is very slightly faster than the middle of the looping. So you want to stay on the right side, go all the way right in a straight line and line yourself up parallel to the rail. On the jump you can win a very marginally extra bit of speed by pointing the nose very slightly downward and pulling up just before landing. You can do this on all three laps but the time it saves is very marginal. Keep a straight line on the finish stretch and as soon as you enter lap 2, start boosting. Keep on boosting throughout the entire lap 2 without seizing. You can take this turn without any aids, just steer very gently through it. And you can skip the dash place on the start of the lap 2. The Tuinerita has an A-class boost which is better than the C-class boost the dash place will give you. 
you can go up against this rail again in the tunnel, just steer gently, it's all that should be sufficient. Go throughout the entire refill strip to refill your energy and you should be up to max energy when you exit it. That's why we can skip the dash plates. The turn on the left is pretty much the same as on the first lap, but line yourself up with the dash plates a little bit earlier. Take the full length of it again, go to the inside of the rail, keep on boosting. When you enter the looping, again after this turn, as soon as you can, line yourself up in a straight line with the dash plate. Keep a straight line and keep on boosting over the dash plate. Go to the right side of the looping and set yourself up parallel to the rail again. Keep on boosting all the way. Now there's, there's two moments in the lap when you want to cease boosting. The first one is coming up. That is very at the start of lap 3 when you go into the corner, the first corner. That corner is also the only corner in the lap when you need some aid to get through it cleanly. Use one right side attack, that should be sufficient. So cease boosting, one side attack. Line yourself up with the dash plates because we're running out of energy now. Take the full length of the dash plates and go up against the reel again into the tunnel, just by normal steering. Immediately boost again and you will run out of boost right before the refiller, but start boosting immediately when you enter it again. Keep on boosting for the rest of the lap. The rest of the lap is pretty much the same as lap 2. Stay on the inside, close to the rail. Line yourself up the dash plate, go back to the rail again. The main difference is that your energy will not be sufficient for the rest of the lap. So on the last stretch towards the finish, you will run out of energy. But do not, do not worry, just keep driving a straight line as possible towards the finish and when done correctly you should beat that staff ghost. The main difficulty is in steering gently and keeping your grip along the way. That will definitely take some practice to get a good feeling for the steering mechanism in F0X. The goal time of 1.11.5 is pretty tough, tough but fair. The staff ghost will initially be hard enough for you to beat. But as you can see, if you do it well, you can even get sub 111 or 110 5, 110 6 kind of times. I think if you get up to 111 5, the goal, you will be really good at efficient driving and steering, which is a key technique in F0X that was used throughout the game. Pretty much any strategy will need this, including the more difficult strategies for this track coming up. So if you get to the goal, you're definitely ready to start with the more difficult stuff. Good luck! Well, you do not really need to build a LEGO Turbo Controller to mash that B button. But when boosting, you want to keep boosting in immediate succession. So mashing that B button really fast will help improve your times. So that's a good tip.
The second strategy of Mute City is way different than the first one. It's a drifting strategy and you start off immediately by a hard rail drift on the right side. That first rail is pretty difficult because you keep bouncing back and forth into it, that's normal, but you will pick up a lot of speed in the process. Extend the drift all the way up to the dash plate and line yourself up right before it. The next drift coming up is really crucial and difficult. Use left side attack and drift into the corner very sharply, too sharply, so you hit the rail, but counter steer right before hitting the rail and drift into the corner again to complete the drifting motion. This will allow you to pick up a lot more speed from this drift than if you drift into that corner just gently and barely touch the rail. Keep a straight line through the refill zone, pretty much like the first lap, and stay on the left side in the next corner. Stay all the way left, far longer than the first strategy, because we'll use a drift over the dash plate. Go very close to the dash plate and only briefly before it. At this moment use a right side attack to steer through the dash plate very sharply and drift over it. Over the back side of it preferably to keep a good drifting line. Use, I use one accelerator tap here to align myself with the rail and keep my grip in the process. You can hug this rail as well, you can lean all the way up against it. It's pretty difficult. After this corner line yourself up the dash plate of Admiral Looping just like the first strategy. Go to the right side, it's faster and it's parallel to the rail. Keep a straight line all the way up to lap 2. Lap 2 coming up is pretty difficult. You start off with a hard rail drift as soon as lap 2 starts. A boost rail drift, so you boost as well. This will blow away a lot of your energy, so be careful with that. If you get your drifting angle just right, you will refill the energy completely. If you drift into it too sharply, you will lose too much energy, you will notice that pretty quickly. Immediately drift on the, on the rail on the right, keep boosting, you will pick up a lot of speed like this. And drift all the way up to the dash plate. If you do it well, you can go over 1400 km per hour, even up to almost 1500 km per hour on a really perfect drift. On this drift, now you're going too fast to do the, to the bouncing strategy, so drift into it gently and touch the rail like this. If you do it really really well you get into the high 1300s up to about 1400 kilometers per hour when you enter the refill and if you're doing that you're on a really good pace. Keep on boosting all the way to lap 2 just like this first strategy, keep boosting. And yeah, the rest of the lap is pretty much the same as the first strategy but it's more difficult because you're in a hellhawk now and you have less grip. Nevertheless you can stay all the way on the inside here just fine. That's why you need to master efficient driving to pull this one off. Line yourself up the dash plate up to the right side of the looping again. Parallel to the rail, keep a straight line all the way up to lap 3. Now, lap 3 is difficult. Right before lap 3 you have to cease boosting because we do not have enough energy to keep on going like this. So after this boost, stop boosting. Keep a straight line into lap 3. Do a well-timed left side attack and aim, set up your drifting angle. If your angle is right, start boosting all the way up to the dash plate. Touch it all the way on the right side, because you keep on boosting all the way through this section, it doesn't matter if you don't go all the way over it. Again, this, this is a tricky rail drift, a really tricky one to get down right. Now your boost will run out right as the refiller starts. Ideally, your speed will be in the high 1300s again, but it's really quite tricky. The energy aspect of this strategy is really difficult to get down, so you can keep on boosting all the way up to the refiller in lap 3. So in the beginning you will most likely run into some energy troubles, so be careful with that. The rest of lap 3 is pretty much the same as lap 2. It's a dash plate on the left side, but do try to take it all the way. Go to the left rail again, try to hook the rail, which can be quite tricky in lap 3. And once you exit this corner, set yourself up in a straight line to hit the dash plate again. Once you get the hang of this strategy, you will be able to cut several seconds of your best time set with the first strategy as demonstrated. The goal I set for this strategy is really tough, tough but fair, so to speak. You really need to have a really good skill set for drifting on tracks like this when real drifting is absolutely the key to make it work well. Once you do, however, the skills you learn in this strategy will come in useful for the rest of Zero X. The following strategies on this track are really difficult as well, 
so it doesn't make much sense to start with them unless you really master this one. Good luck! The third strategy of Mute City is quite different from the second one. But all the way up to the looping in lap 1 it's actually identical. And when you enter the looping it starts to be different. You can do a real drift on the right side of the looping here. To really push your speed up. You can try to aim for about 1300 kilometers per hour at best. If you get something close to that you did a good drift. The next part is triggering of the air ground glitch. So from here the strategy will completely deviate. Land carefully in the left rail, leave the track, use hold down right on the control stick and use a right side attack to aim tilt the ship up and uh, float up in a, in a line like this to the opposite piece of road. If you look carefully you can see two dash plates that are already rendered here in the beginning of, of lap 2. Keep boosting and you have to be about in between the dash plates to trigger this checkpoint for this piece of road and you also have to be above the road. If you're not above the road, the checkpoint will not trigger. Before using this right side attack to aim the ship up on this, uh, this section here, be close enough to the tunnel to trigger that checkpoint. And on this, uh, this section, keep on boosting while float, floating upwards. It's very easy to lose grip because you're really tilted sideways. So tap the accelerator if you found that you're, you are losing grip on this to keep your grip. Keep on boosting all the way past the refiller which will completely refill your energy here. Once the refiller ends, straighten the ship out a little bit by tapping the accelerator and do an air drift left towards the looping. Now the looping I like to see, see it divided in four quadrants, one, two, three, and four, that you have to pass in that order. So you have to go to the top left of the looping from this perspective first. So extend the air drift all the way to the left side, move to the right side, into section 2, into section 3 and into section 4 in that order. If you dive from section 2 to section 4 for instance when you're too high the, the game will just make you crash. Equally if you miss uh, other kinds of checkpoints. So angle the ship down, dive down into lap 2 and you will end at about 3000 kilometers per hour to enter lap 3 at crazy speeds. Now boost will not be effective above 2000 kilometers per hour so only from this point start boosting. You can ignore the dash plates because the A-class boost of the Hellhawk will be better than the C-class boost of dash plates. For the rest of the lap it's pretty much efficient driving, but you'll be going much faster than in other strategies so it's really hard to keep your grip. You can ignore the dash plate coming up as well, you stay on the left side for a shorter driving line. 
that you're going so fast here that keeping grip is really tricky so be careful with that stay close to the left rail you cannot, you cannot hug the rail like in other strategies because you're going too fast for that go a straight line and looping identical to previous strategies and just finish the race keep on boosting that is pretty much it for this strategy the tricky part definitely is lap 2 to trigger all those checkpoints correctly and it will definitely take you some good practice before you get it down and be able to cut as much of the track as possible to, uh, to get it working and do not be afraid to just tap the accelerator if you find yourself losing grip and yeah practice floating in general and air ground glitch in particular to uh, to get it down well and if you do you can really improve your time a lot from strategy 2 even up to about one minute so good luck Alright, we're starting right in the action here, the end of lap 2 already, oh, up to the end of lap 2 which is identical to the previous strategy, so there's no point discussing that, but from here on it will be really highly difficult, this is a tricky moment, air drift left towards the looping, remember it's in 4 quadrants, top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left, but from bottom right, dive down, through the bottom left, and towards this piece of track. Now this is where it's going to be different, because you want to land in the rail to trigger another air ground glitch. Of course, diving down and landing in this rail is extremely hard, trust me, it's really hard. So, you're probably going to need a lot of tries just to get this one down once. But if you do land in the rail, be careful side attacks and fly, don't fly up too much, treat it pretty much like lap 2. Above this piece of track, in between those dash flights to trigger the checkpoints, close enough to the tunnel, use down right, side attack right and angle the ship up for air ground glitch floating through the refiller like this. From this point it's pretty much identical to lap 2 really. So it's really that point where you dive down into the reel that's the tricky part. Again tap the accelerator when floating up on an angle like this. Keep on boosting. It can be really quite tricky to uh, get it down well. Or if you pass the refiller keep on floating just a little bit longer. Straighten the ship a little bit to make the air drift possible again four quadrants in the looping top left top right bottom right and down towards the track again and that's it for this strategy so really diving down and landing in the rail it's gonna need a lot of tries and you need to really both master the air ground glitch and really master double tap dive before it makes really any sense to to attempt this strategy but certainly good players will be able to but it may just make take you some time to really uh, get a good dive and actually land in the reel. But if you do, don't be too surprised because you get another lap of floating up ahead. So good luck with this one. 